This is this is somebody coming to the defense Today in the Council of, Tra of that priest guy with the trans video that I talked about. Stop being trans. Transgender insanity, and there I am. And then it's also pointing to this furry dog thing. Conservatives who need to be converted, what they're missing. Huh. Debated Destiny eight months ago. Okay, this guy's on the debate circuit. Nice, nice. Oh, happy lesbian awareness week? What is it? Are we aware of them? Are we aware now? Okay, nice. What's the... The video's only 15 minutes. That's not... That's not that much. Trent, we're gonna take a look at transgender insanity, starting with a video that was shown to fourth graders at Bramlett Elementary School in Georgia. Oh, okay, it's like an anthology video. I see, I see. So, um... So we should... Hold on. So most of it's me. Vosh's critique of... What does FR stand for? Is that Friar? Is that what that refers to? Father. That's that's how that's how you do the that's how you shorten father? How would you? I'm not sure. I guess I never really thought about it. It just sounds odd. I for me it just comes like former, you know? And then I thought, is it Friar? That's not like a term anymore. Uh, but no, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Didn't really think about it. And non Catholic. All right, so the other video I want to talk about is Vosh's recent critique of an older video Father Mike Schmitz put out on how to compassionately that's, respond to those who identify as transgender. That's me. You know, ever since he was little, we didn't have to tell him he liked dolls more than like truck, more than he liked trucks. We already he saw liked, this part, um, though. Dresses more than he liked jeans. He liked pink more than he liked blue. And you think of that, wait a second, that's how you know that your little boy is actually a girl? No, no. the only way you know is if your little boy says so. And my little boy says he's Spider-Man, but that doesn't make it. Wow, very, ah, very smart, very high IQ response. Yes, excellent. Except Spider-Man is a character in a comic book, and gender is an identity. So in order to determine an element of a person's identity, there's no empirical measure for it. You would have to, like, ask them. It's possible that they could lie, but a person could lie about their feelings and thoughts in all sorts of ways that no person could, like, objectively determine. Like, how do you objectively determine what a person's favorite food is? without just relying on what they tell you, you know? Like, like, what, what, like what, how, what about the identity gamer? Like, how do, you, how do you go about that without relying on a person's subjective feelings and how they self-express, right? What if they just, like, you know, it's, it's, um, it's gonna be one of those videos. The Spider-Man, it's gonna be one of those. Get true. It's horrifying that children are being abused in this way, and Vosh is just wrong. Abuse? What, wait, abuse? Asked what their gender identity is? So, damn, this must be pretty harmful. Coming from a Catholic, too. I mean, you guys know all... <laughs> you could, well, with you guys being the expert on child abuse and all, you know, I, I, I have to say that's pretty informed criticism. ...wrong on this, about this kind of evidence being what is used to diagnose children, children as young as toddlers, as being transgender. You what, is, what does that even mean? Children as young as toddlers being trans... I don't even, I don't even understand what that means. You can see that in this now deleted video from Boston Children's Hospital. Okay. A child will often know that they are transgender from the moment that they have any ability to express themselves. And yeah, uh, this person's uh, uh, full of shit. How could you possibly know that about someone based on like the way a toddler babbles? Yeah, no, it's obviously wrong. Um, over eager statements. I mean, if it was taken down, wouldn't that be an indication of fault from Boston Children's Hospital? Like. Is this meant to insinuate that every single advocate for trans people believes this thing that was taken down by Boston Children's Hospital or that this might be like an overzealous expression? I, I would say you could get signs, right? Like, for instance, a lot of people who come out as gay when they're like 20 or something, you know, um, it, it, a lot of people in their lives will look back on their life and say, like, I could tell, right? How early is too early to tell? Because that's a pretty common thing. You know, like 10, I don't know, like depending, a lot of it's post hoc justification, but none of it really matters. At the end of the day, you're deferring to what people, um, you know, what, what people identify as. Parents will often tell us this. We have parents who tell us that their kids, they knew from the minute they were born practically. So that's obviously a hyperbolic statement, which is why she said it that way. But yeah, obviously you can't tell that from the minute. You could, you could no more tell a, a, the gender of a, a, an, an infant from the moment of birth than you could tell what food it will like or what clothing it'll like or whatever, you know? You can make reasonable inferences based on, like, environmental factors, but that's it. But yeah, that's obvious hyperbole. 
and actions like refusing to get a haircut or standing to urinate, trying to stand to urinate, refusing to stand to urinate, trying on siblings' clothing, uh, playing with the, quote, opposite gender toys. I think that this is for the most part ill-informed and overzealous. I do think that there's some nugget of truth in here that if you have, like, a young boy who's a son, right? Like, they're your son. They're your biological son. And they just, th this young boy does not want to get their hair cut, is insistently playing with girls' toys. I don't think that makes them a trans girl. I just think that you should be aware of that so in the future, if that kid of yours has any conversations they want to have with you about their identity, you know, maybe when they're a bit older, they can think a little bit more. They're not like a literally like five years old. You know, you might be like more thoughtful and receptive to that conversation. That's what I'm thinking about here, right? Like, for instance, you know, if 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 there was like a, a kind of like a like a fruity kid, many such cases, by the way, and you're delusional if you don't think that's the case. Like, I don't, I don't think that means you should go like, hey, you're gay, kid. You're gay, actually. You're going to be gay in the future. You're gay now. I don't think you should do that. I just think that you should look and you should think like, oh, okay, you know, God, God makes us all in unique and different ways, you know, <laughs> you know, and just be ready for future convos. Was that, was that good? Did I plug in the like religious angle pretty well there? You know, things like that. You can also see the same pattern in other kids paraded around in the media as being transgender. He didn't want to play with boys. Totally. That's, that's not an infant. Is that what infants look like? I feel like this is a totally different topic now. I thought what we were lambasting was the idea of diagnosing an infant as trans, but this is like, I mean, they're a kid, but like that's, this is like a, like a teenager, you know? Toys you'd up girls' toys you didn't want to play with, wear girls' clothes from a tiny age. Yeah, I always... Wait, hold on. This individual is taller than their want mother. To play with, wear girls' clothes from a tiny age. Yeah. Wait, 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 this per... Wait, the... <laughs> I know... It, it looks like the person here is taller than the other two on the couch. Is this, how old is this? Is that, this, is this even a teenager? They're like 20? I always... It's actually the world's biggest toddler. The only thing I really liked was babies, uh, mm -hmm. like baby dolls, because I just like babies. But apart from that, um, I was really heavily into like sports and I liked skateboards and I liked all this other stuff, but yeah. I was- So this is a trans guy and obviously one who's transitioned, if for no other reason than judging like from the voice, you know? Um, this is like super what is this? What point is this meant to prove? This is incredibly common. A, a gay person who's 20 will go, yeah, when I was growing up, like I didn't like playing with the girls at all. I just like playing with the boys or whatever. Like th th this, ha this is like, this isn't even gender ideology. This is just like an, an acknowledgement of how humans work at a very basic level, you know? It's never into to girls, toys, dolls, princesses, anything pink. How, also, how desperate do you have to be to reach, to prove the idea that gender ideology advocates are like transing the babies or whatever, that you reach for a single deleted video and a completely innocuous testimony from one trans person? Like, what is this like a medical literature kind of deal? You know, where, where, where are we going to approve these points? At all. It what the data shows is that in many of these cases, transgender identity is related to social pressure from peers or parents. Really? Um, that's interesting. Can you prove that point? Because there's tons of evidence to indicate that there's social pressure to be cisgender. Where's the evidence to your point? Because the chart we're looking at right now doesn't have anything to do with that point. Not from an actual biological condition. We know this evidence? because European countries are pausing transgender treatments for youth. If that that's not how evidence works? Wait, what? We know for a fact the reason people are transing is because they're being pressured into transing. And we know that because some political committees in Europe have halted uh, trans health care for minors. But what's the connection here, genuinely? What's the relationship? In fact, a 2024 study from the Netherlands that followed transgender youth over the course of 15 years showed that only 2% of teens increased in gender dysphoria. But um, uh, Sure, we can look at it. Have we gone over this one? Wait, wait, why would you want them to increase in gender dysphoria? What does that mean? Oh, hold on. I have a feeling this is being misrepresented. Development of gender non-contentedness during adolescence and early adulthood. Okay, let's see. All right, we found the study. Can you move chat, Vosh? Never. Stay in your corner. Okay, um, uh, da, da. oh, it's just the abstract, it's not like da-da-da, okay. Um, 
Adolescence is an important period for the development of gender identity. True. We studied the development of gender non-contentedness, i.e. unhappiness with being the gender aligned with one's sex from early adolescence to young adulthood and its association with self-concept. Um, wait, hold on. Gender non-contentedness and gender dysphoria don't necessarily mean the same thing. You could probably find lots of cisgender men and women who are not happy with the gender aligned with their sex, but not in a dysphoric way, more in a like, I'm unhappy with the expectations kind of way, right? Like, um, like a woman in 14th century France might like being a woman, you know, herself, but not the broader social standards, you know, that's not like dysphoria, that's just, well, anyway, that's sort of a category error, maybe. Participants were 2,700 adolescents, 53% male tracking, da, da, da. Data from six waves. Gender non-contentness was assessed with the item. I wish to be opposite sex. Oh, okay. Well, that's dysphoria there. Okay. I'm glad I'm glad they clarify that. Gender non-contentedness was assessed with the item. I wish to be the opposite sex from the youth and adult self-report of all six waves. Behavioral and emotional problems were measured by total scores of the scale of all six waves. Self-concept was assessed at age 11 using the global self-worth and physical appearance subscales. Okay. In early adolescence, 11% of participants reported gender non-contentedness. So early would be when you're what, 11? Okay. And uh, the prevalence decreased with age and was 4% at the last follow-up around age 26. Okay. Makes sense. Three developmental trajectories of gender non-contentedness were identified. No gender non-contentedness, 78%. So people who are never non-contented with their gender. Decreasing gender non-contentedness, 19% and increasing gender non-contentedness 2%. Wait, what is the, wait, how does this even remotely prove the point that was being made about how people are being socially pressured to trans? Even if we just took the 2% of increasing gender non-contentedness right here, this is more than the percent of trans people. Is it, wait, wouldn't this be, wouldn't this be an indication not only that 2% of the population is transgender, but what's more, they're, they're transgender from 11 onward? Wait, doesn't this prove the opposite of your point? Your argument is that the only reason that people transition is due to social pressure too, which, okay, yeah, there's so much social pressure to do that. That's so true. And then this is like, well, actually, if you break people down based on their gender non-contentedness, it turns out that fully one in 50 people from age 11 onward are not only wanting to change their sex, but increasingly so with time. So, okay, I don't know what this is meant to prove. You get a lot of these, though, like people very aggressively misinterpret um, uh, 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 studies, you know, to prove, you know, to prove whatever. I guess I just wish they would be honest and just acknowledge the fact that they don't really have much of a like theory basis for what they believe in. They just don't like because it's like icky, like trans people is like icky, you know, I wish they'd be um, I wish they'd be clear about that. This, if anything, this completely validates my perspective on uh, on the matter. But OK but 19% became more confident in their authentic sexual identity and 78% were unchanged one way or the other. It's not at all surprising that as you age, you would grow more comfortable with your identity. That's literally what aging does. You know, like, yeah, like, yeah. Did, did you did you know that as people get older, they tend to be more sure of their identity? Yes, I, I'm, I am aware of that. I was once myself 11 and now I am 30. Mm hmm. The authors say the results of the current study might help adolescents to realize that it is normal to have some doubts about one's identity and one's gender identity during this age period, and that this is also relatively common. Yeah, that's, uh-huh. Yeah, that's, of course, that's true. Yeah, okay. What's with the cadence? Because he thinks that's a counter-argument, but he doesn't seem to understand that advocates for transgender rights don't say that the nanosecond a young boy picks up a Barbie that they should have estrogen like force fed down their gullet or something. It's just something that's arbitrary. Skirts that women wear skirts is arbitrary. That women play with dolls or over trucks is arbitrary. Hold on, wait, if you really think it's arbitrary then, Mr. Priest man, uh, you shouldn't have any issue whatsoever with cross-dressing. The fact that a red traffic light means stop and a green one means go is arbitrary. We could have reversed them. But even if it's arbitrary, acting in contradiction to them is still really bad for you. Explain to me how exactly it's bad for you to wear a dress as a guy. I would love it if you could complete that. I would, lo I would love it if you could complete that. Likewise, pink used to be a boy's color and blue used to be a girl's color. Uh -huh. But social norms help clue us into biological realities. What, how, wait, how, wait, how, okay, how do, 
How do social norms clue us into biological realities if the pink-blue dynamic used to be opposite? What is it cluing us into? What does that even mean? What? The, like, the color... The, well, it used to be, biologically, the color pink was male, but now we recognize, biologically, the color blue is male. This is what I mean. This is what happens when... when I, I was going to say religious types, but like it's reactionaries in general. Try to do the data thing. They're like so laughably out of their depth. They're using the terms and they're structuring the arguments the way you would think a scientifically minded person would, but they have no clue. What do you mean? These, well, uh, you know, they may be arbitrary social norms, but they cue us into biological realities. Uh, what? And so purposely transgressing them in order to subvert biology isn't good for you. Subvert? So wait, wait, when they switched the blue and the pink, was that them subverting biology? Was that, was it, is it, you, do you subvert biology if you wear like a pink summer suit in, in, in a, into a Florida wedding? With like, you're, it's like... You're like violating a social law. What does it mean? This again, like they're 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 like, well, okay, I this is okay, this is exactly what I mean. You're religious. Why don't you just say God wants men to wear blue and girls to wear pink? Like it's just as bullshit, but at least then you're not pretending to be deferring to some kind of like uh, like just do like because that's what you really think, right? You don't actually get it's so stupid. Human person. We just shouldn't be confusing people like this. By, yeah, by, by confu- Yep, if you, if a girl wears blue jeans, God forbid, you know, no one has any idea what's going on anymore. So, I, I like how the opening was the, with the traffic light example, where the obvious, like, re rejoinder with that would be, well, if you stop, like, paying attention to the traffic lights and ignore the colors because they're arbitrarily chosen, then you start hurting people because we, it's like a so, there's a safety standard that we enforce socially. And then the safety standard analogy goes completely out the window and it's just like, yeah, don't, like, confuse people by wearing blue as a woman, you know? Oh, she's absolutely adorable. He. Oh, sorry. He's, he's dressed all in pink. That's fair. Hey, whoa, hold on. Sorry. He. I noticed that uh, Pam is wearing some blue in her scarf. Is this a violation of biological norms? Is she confusing people? She's wearing blue. That's like the light baby blue as well. Just wondering. Yeah, she's wearing a blue shirt too. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Pam is a man? Yeah, I guess so. Or something. Oh, sorry. He's, he's dressed all in pink. That's his favorite color. Oh, that's fun for him. Father Mike is just... What is, what is that what is that clip meant to demonstrate apart from that it's from the office? I'm not being facetious. I don't know what argument that was meant to support, but it was a nice clip from the office saying that in many cases a child who merely has gender non-conforming behavior ends up being shoehorned with a transgender diagnosis. Something which somehow has just not been proven despite nearly a decade of conservatives trying to say that that's what's happening, you know? Literally a decade over and over again of conservatives saying, oh no, no one's actually trans, children are being groomed into it, somehow unsupported by the evidence with an incredibly low desistance rate, a very, very high rate of continuing through transition, just like, no. Now, look, as always, I will be fair here, with literally anything social or medical, false positives can exist. There will be, just as a numbers game, there will be like some number of people who later detransition or who were even like kind of pressured into it by overly zealous doctors. This can be the case with literally any medical procedure, right? A medical procedure might not be fully necessary, but a doctor feels like it might be, but maybe they're not speaking like in a fully informed way. So, you know, it, it like this stuff always happens in literally all fields, right? And the goal should be to minimize it. But the way you minimize it isn't just by removing it, the procedure altogether, because then far, far, far more people get hurt, right? Like, if you if you just go, well, uh, triple bypass heart surgery has the potential to be misused, so nobody gets it. You're not actually helping people very much, right? You have to proportion it uh, in line with the evidence. Of course, in reality, when it comes to being people, when it comes to people being pressured into their identity, people get pressured to be cis and straight. You're a Catholic, you know this, come on. Like, come on. The only reason you don't think that is because you think those are the normal identities, so you're just being pressured into normalcy or return to normalcy. But that is, you are literally doing the thing. And again, Catholic grooming jokes, right? Like, there's a million of them, you know of them, probably makes you really defensive, but, you know, it's all pretty valid, I'd say. 
Um, I don't think you have a great standard for what, like, the normalcy people should be returning to is. In fact, that's a high problem for transgender identity in general. There's no difference between a transgender woman, quote unquote, and a gender non-conforming man who dresses and acts like a woman but says he's a man. Uh, well, there is, actually. It's an identity thing, so you would ask for their identity, and that's the thing. Like, this is like saying there's no difference between a Packers fan and a person who isn't a Packers fan because you can draw blood samples from both of them and one of the, like, there's no difference based on them, like, not, or both being Packers fans. <laughs> like, what, like, it's, again, like, yeah, the, it's, it's, they forget what identity means. If you want to talk about biological sex, then sure, talk about it. Go for it. The two individuals dress and act the same. One merely claims to be a woman, but even though the term would have absolutely no meaning for him. This trend, and, and, and yet somehow there does seem to be a pretty robust, distinct uh, social categorization system that allows for there to be differences between feminine men and trans women, you know? Just not really a mix-up that happens that much in real life, you know? Kind of like a non-existent problem. This, this taxonomical distinction over an arbitrary social category like gender, like, what if we ruined millions of people's lives just to preserve the cleanliness of this arbitrary set of definitions? Eh. Trans woman is biologically more like a cis woman than a cis man. And you would want to tell your doctor all of this. If you came into a doctor's office after, as a trans woman, having not gone through a male puberty and having been on hormones your whole life, basically, and you say, yep, I'm a man, X, Y chromosomes, yep, that wouldn't tell the doctor very much at all. I mean, your genitals certainly wouldn't function and operate like a cisgender man's would. Your entire body would be awash with chemicals that make it act differently to how, say, my body goes. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm just spitting here, aren't I? I'm, whew, I'm just laying that shit down. Why let me talk for this long? No, it would tell the doctor a ton. It would explain what's wrong with his body and why he- <laughs> What? Okay, okay, sorry. He's presenting with certain female features, even though he doesn't have- that, you, 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 you go to the doctor with a broken arm, and the doctor, the doctor's like, what is this? What's, what's wrong with you? And you're like, well, I fell off my bike. And he's like, no, why do you have breasts? And you're like, well, I, what, what? Why is your skin so smooth? What, my, my arm- my my arm broke. Why 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 does your voice sound like that? <laughs> you know, like what? Yeah, the the purpose of going to a doctor when you're trans is the is like a guessing game for the doctor to discover that you're trans. You know, ovaries, a uterus, or a vagina. You would tell your doctor, "I'm a biological male who takes massive amounts of female hormones." Well, you would you would say, "I'm a trans woman," which is what that that. Well, well, first of all, they don't take massive amounts. You, you can't just take like a giant gallon of it. You just take the hormones. It's not, they, trans women don't take an unusual amount of estrogen relative to like, say, estrogen or testosterone treatments for cisgender women and men, respectively. It's just, you take the hormones. It's not like a huge amount. Um, secondly, if you go in there and you say, I am a trans woman, you would in fact be communicating that you were born biologically male and that you've been taking hormones. You just like your term more because it dehumanizes, but it's actually less accurate. If you went over to a doctor and said, uh, hi, look, look, at my, look, look past my giant ripe steaming tits. I am a biological male who has taken oceans of hormones. They would look at you like you're crazy because that would be a crazy thing to say. Whereas if you say I'm a trans woman, then that make that would make more sense and be less crazy. So just see, this is me trying to pull you towards normalcy here. I'm trying to like drag you back to how normal humans think and talk, I'm trying to help. What if you had a machine that didn't change? Oh, is he going to talk about the like the gender of your soul thing? Okay. The chromosomes, but change everything that the chromosomes would themselves change. So you had a person who was XY, but had a vagina, a functioning womb, breasts, so on and so forth, right? There are people like that, right? The XXY development. No, there aren't people like that. XXY is Kleinfelter's syndrome. These are biological males who have stunted development. It's obvious they are men, not women. Uh, was, it, was I thinking of the, what was it, the XY, uh, hold on. Haven't we, haven't we done this before? If I was a real ally, I could remember all of the sex and gender thingies, but I can't because my brain is small. Signs and symptoms of Kleinfelter syndrome will vary among males in disorder. Which was the, um, which was the condition where you can have an extra chromosome, not Down syndrome, you know what I mean, um, that, um, that doesn't impair your, like, sex expression. Androgen insensitivity? Oh, was I thinking of androgen insensitivity, like hyperandrogen uh, insensitivity, where you're just completely not at all, is that, what is this, let me see. 
XY gonadal dysgenesis, uh, defect hypergonadism and where a karyotype is 46 XY, normal vulvas, person has underdeveloped gonads, fibrous tissue teams, street gonads left untreated, will not experience puberty, um, Turner syndrome due to lack of X and activation. The typical medical treatment is hormone replacement therapy. Ah, this keeps coming up, huh? Um, gonad is a real medical term. Yeah, isn't it like Latin or something? Anyway, if a person has XXY, Kleinfelter syndrome, is that, would that not be a new sex? Because people like, people like this tend to say that sex is determined by your, um, your chromosomes, right? So if, if like, th is this its own sex or like, how are we treating that, you know? Or is it just the effects that the hormones or the chromosomes have on you through hormones? And then there's the androgen insensitivity thing. I think this is the thing that I was thinking of here, uh, where a person is um, XY, but completely resistant to the, um, the androgen. Here, hold on. Androgen insensitivity syndrome. People with AIS are genetically male, uh, but don't develop male external genitals because their body can't respond to male sex hormones. Yeah. So complete androgen insensitivity syndrome basically means that even though you're XY, your body just does not respond to the, sh the, the wacky shit the Y chromosome is doing. It prevents the masculinization of male genitalia in the developing fetus, as well as the development of male secondary sexual characteristics, but does allow female genital and sexual development in those with the condition. Yeah, so you you would be, yeah, genotypically male and phenotypically female. Thank you, Darby Doll. Yeah, exactly. O uh, ultimate femboy? Kind of, yeah, I guess. So, whoa, Wikipedia. It's fine. There's nude yoga on YouTube. I probably should have guessed for that, though. Though, if you did briefly see the bottom right corner of the screen, you could get a feel for the uh, phenotypical expression of these hyperandrogen insensitive individuals. Um... That's what they said about in the House MD episode, lol. Well, that's that's where I get all of my, uh, you know, that's where I get all of my medical takes from. Anyway, what are we going on about here? There we go. Okay. Development. No, there aren't people like that. XXY is Kleinfelter syndrome. These are biological males who have stunted development. It's obvious they are men, not women. And you can make all kinds of science fiction it, arguments. I mean, what does that mean? It's obvious they are men, not women. They they don't have XY chromosomes. What is that? Uh, what can you, could you... Could you give me like the scientific breakdown of that? It's obvious they are men. Like by what standard? The the they they don't have uh they don't have XY chromosomes. They have XXY chromosomes. That's not the same. That's a that's a different chromosome layout. Common sense. Do you not sense their aura? Yeah, I suppose. Arguments about changing everything about a person's body except for their DNA, but that's not possible. Instead of basing morality on science fiction. Oh my guys, the last section here is. Vosh comments on priests, and I can tell from the screenshots the rest of it is him calling me a pedophile. Oh, that really did get to him. All right, we're not going to watch, watch that last part. I bet that was the one he was waiting for at the end. We're not going over that one. He big mad. Hey, he big mad. All right. He, hey, listen, okay. He wishes the extent of the evidence against the Catholic Church was limited to a bunch of bad faith YouTube videos, okay? As opposed to, I don't know, like a century and a half of cover up. <laughs> Just saying. We should base it on science fact, and it's a scientific. We should base it on science fact. Also, it's obvious that XSY Kleinfelter syndrome individuals are men, you know, based on, it's obvious, yeah. Fact that human beings exist in a sexual binary. This is something it, that- It's obvious that there are only two sexes because we know that there are only two sexes. <laughs> Never mind the fact that there are different uh, chromosomed individuals out there and there are people who are in basically every functional sense, like phenotypically women who just happen to have XY chromosomes, but they're not like androgen sensitive. Um, you know, never mind all that, okay? It's just, it's a, it's a total binary of sex. Never mind the fact that, like, actual medical and scientific organizations, like, thank you very much. This is from, uh, the, uh, the American Science, uh, which paper published this? Sex refers to a set of factors that determine whether an individual is considered biologically female, male, or intersex. We literally have the term intersex. Like, that's, like, a widely used term, you know? Um, well, if you, if you assume from the get-go that we have a sexual binary, then we have a sexual binary, you know? Simple as. Simple as. And even atheist Scientific American, that was, that's what it was. Biologists like Richard Dawkins and Jerry Coyne <laughs> strongly defend. Thank, thank you. That's, thank you for giving me uh, Richard Dawkins' take on the subject. You know, well-known well contemporary medical expert Richard Dawkins. Thank you very, very much. 
I, I'm not but when people say there are 100 genders, yeah, for example. Uh, yeah, I'm not interested in that. As, as a biologist, there are two sexes, hmm. uh, and that's all there is to it. BIID. Well done. Got him. Got his ass. Stands for Body Integrity Identity Disorder. And what BIID is, is it's when someone looks at like saying something like their hand and says, this isn't my hand. This is, it feels foreign to me, or these legs feel foreign to me. In fact, there was a documentary I watched a number of years ago about a woman who she perceived herself to be a paraplegic. She perceived herself that her legs didn't work. Again, this is a mismatch between how you uh, perceive. This is where I talked about the difference between dysphoria and dysmorphia. I think I did a pretty good job here explaining the difference between the two. I feel like this was pretty instructive. I was happy with this video. Um, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how that part came out. You know, perceive your body to be and what your body actually is. It's a disconnect between empirical, like verifiable bits of information, not a dissatisfaction with the way that your body. So at this point, he's going, the, the person who's making the video we're watching, he's going to pause this and go, well, your sex, he's going to ignore the gender sex thing. Your sex is an empirical fact of reality, right? So by being trans and being dysphoric, you're delusional about it, actually. So that's what he's going to do now, I think. He is. When you look at people with body identity integrity disorder, you see an uncanny resemblance to transgender identity. Mm -hmm. Here's a video about a woman with this condition in the UK. Notice how it's so similar to transgender identity. How, wait, okay, all right, uh, sure, how? Let's see. The person feels that their healthy body is wrong and- Okay, let's just break this down bit by bit because this is a really stupid comparison. So I feel like we should milk this for as much as we can in, in terms of sort of like tearing into it. Okay, so- a person thinks their healthy body is wrong, coming from a Catholic especially, is a descriptor so vague it could include people who then go on to get piercings or tattoos. Like, that is such a vague descriptor that it means absolutely nothing, especially to a person who has such, like, um, like, I don't know, um, orthodox views towards the, like, worth and weight of the human body, you know? You could say this about a person who's getting glasses, right? They're perfectly normal, God-given body. They thought it was wrong, but all right. Needs to be changed to correspond to a faulty internal psychological... Well, oh, presumptuous language. Faulty internal psycholo... Whoa, hold on there. Um, yeah, I would say that uh, this condition and transgenderism are the same and that they're both... Uh, look at the uncanny similarities between how these two things operate. If you look closely, you might notice they're both stupid and dumb. Uh, uh, that concludes my point. Yeah, okay, if you're gonna presume the values in the comparison, you're not really making a comparison, you're just asserting your values over again with, like, more, like, pretense, I guess. ...view of themselves. Chloe Jennings White spends her days confined to a wheelchair. That was it? It's tough that to get was around, the comparison? And she struggles with living in a world that isn't built for the disabled. However, Chloe is actually able to walk perfectly and chooses to live her life like a paraplegic due to a rare psychological disorder called BIID. BIID has led Chloe... Okay. Wait, was that seriously the end of the comparison? All that guy had to say was, look at the uncanny similarities between these two things. Um, they're both like delusional. Okay, moving on. Which university end of educated argument. research scientist to harm herself in a bid to become paraplegic for real. I have fantasies about having a car wreck and becoming paraplegic from a car wreck. So wait, out of curiosity, by the way, what would you suggest? So surely the priest making this video would agree that it's better that she use the wheelchair but still have functioning legs than to actually have her legs removed, right? Excuse me. I just wonder, like, what would the, what would the, like, best case scenario be here? I'm kind of curious. Perhaps most shockingly of all, London-born Chloe is on a quest to find a surgeon willing to operate in order to paralyze her legs forever. I did find a surgeon uh, in, in another country who would be prepared to do femoral and sciatic nerve transections to paralyze my legs. It would be at least $25,000. I don't have the money to do it. What's the parallel with trans people? I have no idea. We're also at the end of this section, which means that actually was the end of the argument from him. It's basically the, the only reason that I've not yet had surgery. Finally, we get your class. That was it. That actually was the end of the argument. He was like, yeah, yeah, look at, look at these incredible parallels here, and, and, and then said nothing. <laughs> and then the final section is him molding about me making uh, references to the very well-documented, well-known fact that the Catholic Church systemically abuses uh, uh, young children and covers it up by shuffling priests around uh, to send them to new areas to rape more children, because doing so would incur less uh, criticism from the press than just sort of like openly allowing them to be tried. I want the molding. I'm sure you do. Then watch the video.
Listen, this has been retarded from start to finish, okay? I'm not giving this guy a platform to just whine about how the Catholic Church is actually less pedophilic than known YouTuber Vorsch. That being said, you know, being, being accused of being a pedophile from a Catholic, whew, man, talk about field expertise, my God, you know? Got a sting, huh? Yeah, yeah, you know? If, if ever there was one to know. Takes calculating the total the Catholic Church pays for settlements, legal fees, moving people against their total global budget is amazing. Some years it's like 20%. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so that video was pretty boring. I guess the guy who made it is going to see this because he seems like he's pretty tapped into the debate sphere. But like this was the same. Again, if you if you don't have any actual scientific beliefs, stop pretending to. There's nothing more irritating than like people who gas themselves up on, uh, I, I don't know, like something that at least mimics the aesthetic of a well-structured evidence-based argument when it's really just like, this is icky, you know? It would be much better if you would just say, I think this is icky, right? Like that would be far, far, far better. It, re it reminds me of that, like, um, that one Muslim guy that I debated, I don't even remember what it was on, like porn addiction. And he didn't believe, like he, his religious belief was that porn was icky. And e every like study that followed that was just like stuff he had been furiously grabbing together to try to justify. And then after the end of that debate, someone linked me another stream from another debate that he did where he was arguing in favor of pedophilia, literal, actual, he was arguing like, Muhammad, you should be able to marry and kids, right? And like, and, and, and for that, he was also like, well, logically, actually, but like, again, he didn't arrive at that position because he studied studies. He arrived at that position because of his religious beliefs. And then in order to do the debate circuit thing, because you can't do the debate circuit thing, if all you're saying is, well, God said so he like clamored together, like every bit of fake evidence yet, but like there was no actual like methodology to it, right? Yeah, working backwards from his, uh, from his personal opinion, yeah. I think you made some comparison to Candy, to which he then said Candy should be banned as well. Yeah, but he doesn't actually think that. And wasn't he a bit, um, portly himself? I don't think he believes that. I don't think he believes that at all. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all pretty, it's all pretty dumb. It's just, again, this is, this is one of the, like, impediments to debate, right? Like, this is one of the things that makes debate, um, like, really boring these days. It's that the number of, like, opponents that you can find who believe something, actually believe and are willing to defend it, that's step two, okay? And then third, they believe it in an evidentiary sense and can argue on that level rather than literally just saying stuff like, well, I believe it because it's true. Because, like, what, what debate can you have there? Um, unfortunately, every, like, these communities are so insular these days, it's almost impossible. Of course, Anonymous Platypus. Anyway, hopefully the, the priest guy, if he's still watching this, to make his seething response to a response to a response video. Um, just keep in mind, like, I have Catholic friends, um, you know, and, uh, some, some of them are all right, okay? Uh, so what you should do is you should make some tra transgender friends, and you should, like, you know, uh, talk to them a little bit. And uh, you you should try to learn about their life experiences, you know. And that's and 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 maybe we can all like shake hands and and, and work together, you know. Now that the the Pope is basically um, the most left leaning human on earth, uh, anyway, you know. I actually think this is another like American Catholics are seething because so many of them uh, are are really upset with the woke Pope, right? So I, maybe they're getting like rowdy because of that. They're really upset that the Vatican has been issuing, um, you know, like canon they don't like. That's the woke to you. I was just using his formal title. Here's the answer as to how sex is determined by chromosomes under the chromosomal system. Sex determination system. This, ha this has naked people on it. You, 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 you're just trying to taxes me again. You're just trying to taxes me again. Also, this isn't really interesting to me because for one, there are almost certainly different systems of categorization. For two, categorizations can be consistent but still arbitrary. Look at speciation differences, for example, species taxonomy. And third, we're talking about sex as a social category, right? Because when people like that priest guy talk about sex, he doesn't actually mean sex, right? Because if he did, this whole argument wouldn't be happening because he would understand that gender is a different thing. <laughs> it would like it, they're fully in not just sex, but everything associated with it in a in a social sense. Right. Does it make much sense to refer to somebody with total androgen insensitivity as a male? Like imagine there was a baby who was born looking like a baby, like a, like a little girl and then grew up to be a girl and then to a woman and then spent her entire life as a woman. And then at 30, she got a medical, like she just got a look at, and it's like, oh, actually you have like total androgen insensitivity. You actually have XY chromosomes. Like you are, you are 
like Gino, like you, you are male, right? Like gametes, you know, um, but just not in any way that has meaningfully influenced you like socially. Would it then make sense to just like, oh, time to stick this person in like jeans and a t-shirt and be a man and blah, blah, blah. Like it, no, it's, and again, you know, you're never actually talking about sex versus gender here. When that guy made that God awful comparison between pink and blue dresses and red light green light you know like don't deny biological reality by wearing blue as a woman it's just it's just it's so dumb there's not there's no argument so silly american catholics are weirdly very protestant well catholicism is 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 fundamentally just not like an american thing okay like we have our irish and our italians but we we we, we know okay catholicism belongs to europe evangelicals got america you can get Catholics in America, but the Catholicism that like really flourishes in America is going to be from the Mexicans. That's their that's their domain. Let's move on to the next segment. Next segment. Next segment. You mean having fun playing games? What are you what are you linking me? Stop linking me things. Yes, but he is using the pretense of scientific discussion, which is why he said XXY is male. It is the accepted definition in medical literature when it comes to chromosomes. Yeah, but if that was the case then, then their broader arguments wouldn't make sense. So this is what I mean. The application of scientific standards of sex are inconsistent when used by reactionaries who deny the existence of gender roles, or sorry, gender identity as a separate thing, because if they did accept the scientific definition of sex, they would understand that it doesn't at all include those roles. You can't do both. You can't have a metaphysically justified uh, perspective on gender that overlaps it and applies it to sex while also having a scientific understanding of sex. They're completely incompatible. Because if you do believe that, then his version of what distinguishes a sex also includes the idea that if you are a male, you are denying biological reality by wearing pink, right? It's, it's nonsensical, which is why I reject it fundamentally. It, what's better then is to argue about, okay, so f like functionally speaking, if this like androgen insensitive individual who would be a male in like a, a gene sense, right? Like what social utility is there then to refer to this biological male, right? As a man, wouldn't it make more sense to refer to them as a woman, live their whole life as a woman, sounds like a woman, talks like, like, what, like, what do you want, right? Um, and that's where you get the interesting questions, you know, don't do their argument for them by saying, oh, well, there is a system to determine it because that's not their system. They pretend it's their system, you know, but upon closer examination, it simply isn't. Isn't there a species of lizard where they have like three genders, but it's kind of also three sexes. They have males and females, but the, the males will only impregnate the females, but another type of male will raise the eggs or like or guard the eggs or something uh but it's like a beta male right like it's literally like the beta male the alpha male and the female you know side blotch lizard the highest number of distinct male and female morphs within a species three male and two female god damn yeah and it's like determined by their the colors on them or something like like on the the stripes in their throat that is wild mm -hmm.